Welcome to another edition of Active Living. I'm your host, George Sinnott, and we have with us today our traveling man, uh, Mr. Jim Roback. Jim has just returned from a trip to Africa, and uh, he's got a lot, of, a lot to talk about today. So, Jim, welcome. Well, thank you, George. It was an excellent trip again, so uh, one of those exotic places to go, and it was very, very exciting. Great. Now, where did we actually fly into? Okay, we flew in from JFK to Johannesburg, and it was about a 14 and a half hour flight to Johannesburg. And then from Johannesburg, we had to fly to Cape Town, which is another two hour flight. So that's where we started our tour, and that's where it began. Wow. Sounds like exciting uh, travel. That it was, and it was fantastic. <laughs> well, I sure can't uh, st stand airplanes for that long, so you must be used to it by now. Never get used to it, no. although I'll talk to you at the end what happened on our return flight, but it was <laughs> a good trip. I mean, it wasn't too bad. You watch a few movies, you know, eat and all that good stuff. So yeah. You try to get some sleep, but not a whole lot there. So So once you arrived, then, then what'd you do? Well, the first thing, you know, uh, just, just as a reminder, these are the four countries kind of visited. We visited uh, South Africa, then went to Swaziland, uh, Zimbabwe and Botswana. So those are the four countries we'll cover okay. today. And so are they might basically in the southern part of Africa uh, or in the middle part? Where are they? Uh, they're actually the southern part of Africa. Okay. It's all the southern part. Cool. So if you remember from your history book, the Cape of Good Hope, where everybody, all the English explorers and all the Dutch explorers went around the Cape of Good Hope of Africa. Right. So that's the part we are going to talk about basically. Okay. So you were way down in the southern part. Yes, we did go to the very southern part. Uh, on our first uh, arrival in, in Cape Town, we had the first day to ourselves. And the next day we started, we did a what they call a Cape Peninsula tour, and um, so we visited like the most southern part of Africa, which is at the Cape Point there, where the lighthouse is at. But um, but where we stopped at first was what they call the Table Mountain View, which is will be the background here. It shows Table Mountain, and there's 12 more peaks, which they consider the 12 disciples of Christ, and then also the last peak is the Last Supper Table. Really, pretty uh, amazing. It's right on the Atlantic Ocean, and it's very panoramic, as you can see in the background there. And uh, as we were traveling through that section there, we went through like a nature preserve there, and there was ostriches we saw, and some um, baboons, and some reeboks, and those kind of animals were there. Not a whole lot, but there was a right. few in that particular area there. From there, we proceeded to what they call Boulder Beach, where we saw penguins. There was over 2,000 penguins there. Really? And they started with two penguins about 20 years ago, and now they go over 2,000 that just reside. They've got a boardwalk, and they're just all over the place, and scurrying around, kind of neat, and we had a lunch there at the restaurant. We had a kind of an interesting dessert. It was called Melva Pudding. It was pretty darn good. You know, we didn't know what it was. Nobody had an idea what it was, but it was excellent. So kind of a nice place to visit. Uh, yeah, you know. penguins are right there in, yeah, in Africa. I couldn't believe it. You know, I said, this is not like Antarctica or someplace cold, you know, but they have over 2,000 that continuously reside there. Are they the little guys? Little the guys big? about maybe 18 inches high. Okay. Yeah, really neat the little guys cool. there. Pretty neat there. And then from there, we left there. We took a tour around what they call uh, Musenberg Mountain. It's almost like the Amalfi Coastal in Italy. It's a, a road that travels all around the mountain. It's just panoramic views of the Atlantic Ocean, just absolutely gorgeous. It was really something uh -huh. to see. And then from there, we went to Botanical Gardens and saw a lot of the uh, flowers there. The key flower there is a, what they call a protea, is a national flower of uh, South Africa. Okay. They have a lot, of, a lot of different varieties, but it was a Botanical Garden. It's kind of more dormant now because it's just coming into spring. Okay. We just went through the uh, monsoon season and such. So, but it was still very nice to visit. They had a lot of these sculptures, metal sculptures in the park. They're huge, like uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex and all those kind of things. But there was kind of pretty interesting. All made out of metal. Out of metal, yeah. And they're yeah. actually situated in different parts of the uh, of the botanical gardens. And cool. Basically, it sits uh, at the bottom again of Table Mountain. Well, the next day, then we went to what they call uh, Ashley Table Mountain. You take a gondola up to the very top. I think it's around 3,000 feet high, something of that nature. And okay. you take a cable car, as you're going up, the cable car rotates. So you can see the panoramic oh, view really? as you see Cape Town going up to the, the top. Some people run up the whole mountain. It takes 45 minutes. People do this every day. <laughs> I don't know how they did it because there were sheer cliffs there. Where the path was, I don't really know. But really? They, they do 45 minutes and make it happen. Wow. And you didn't do that. No, not this time <laughs> around. We could have, could have walked down. But <laughs> there was I know no you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. This would be a piece of cake for it's, you, Jim. It would have been. It would have been nice if we had the time. It would have been very good. Uh, then we uh, visited the Millertown Lighthouse. It actually sits in the very southern part of Africa, like I say. It's almost where the two oceans collide, the Atlantic Ocean and the, and the Indian Ocean. Right. They kind of collide right there. It's supposed to be rough there, too, isn't it? It is very a lot rough, of the, yeah. A lot of the ships, I understand, 
have gotten in wrecks going around the, the Cape? Yes, there was. Even the Lusitania was uh, sunk there. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, what happened was they had to lower the lighthouse from about 900 feet because it was so foggy in that they couldn't see it. So they had to lower the lighthouse to about 180 to 200 feet. Really? And now they can see it like 40 miles out into the ocean, so it's a much better because location. Because of the fog? Yes, yeah, so they had to make sure they get lower so the ships could basically see it. So. Hmm. And from there, you know, that was a real, we had to climb up something like 350 steps at the very top of it. So it was another exercise day to go all the way up after a hearty breakfast, basically. Great. And again, panoramic view, just outstanding scenery in South Africa. It's unbelievable. So after leaving that, we went to what they call a diamond factory. And they showed us one ring. It was $152,000. And I said, well, it's negotiable, you know. So when you talk about diamonds, there's four points you have to consider. It's basically your color, clarity, your carrot, and your cut. Right. And uh, this one had uh, 3.6 carats. Absolutely beautiful. And then they said the most interesting part was the, there's a very, they call yellow diamonds, they're more rare than the okay. pure diamonds. But they showed us a couple of those and uh, unbelievable. So, so they're still doing a lot of di diamond oh, mining yeah. there. Oh yeah, still a lot of di diamond mining. And this was the company was called Shemansky, which was a very expensive place, let's put it that way. This lease at this place said they didn't pressure to buy something. Uh, guess what the cost there? They didn't think that we were like the sheiks of uh, right. South, uh, you know, like so what Saudi would a, Arabia. what would a, a let's say a, a two carat diamond cost you there? I don't know really. I mean, <laughs> they were so exquisitely set in their in their settings, and it was unbelievable. It was but they all end. cut and polished. Oh yeah, all high. Okay. They showed us how they do and everything else. So. Okay. And from there we went. Uh, then we, in the afternoon went to um, what they call a diversity tour, which we went to what we call a township called Inlanga. It was the township. It wasn't mm -hmm. a township. This was the village. And the township was named Gugulitho. And it was uh, considered our pride, and you know the black people are trying to rise out of there. Right. And they were doing some neat things there in training people in how to do pottery, uh, basically painting, ceramics, and try to build the people's uh, education and their ability. Oh, sorry, ability to get a job. Okay. And they were doing a pretty good job. There we bought some artifacts there. It was kind of neat there. So. And, um, Did you see a lot of poor sections? For example, you, you mentioned the blacks didn't didn't have a lot of uh, well, this jobs, whole, but yeah, this line is the poor section in, okay. in Cape Town. And as you were traveling there, it was people out in the fields. They were just camping out there. The homeless people. And, okay. uh, they did some things there to improve it, but I don't want to get into this long discussion of they built homes there or apartments, but then the white people got there because they're expensive, so the blacks couldn't afford it. So it was okay. kind of an interesting situation. So, but that was kind of an eye opener. Let's put it that way. The poverty there is just, just astounding, outstanding, and just terrible. Really? I mean, um, it's not good. We'll talk about it when we go to Sweto a little bit more about that. The next day, we spent all day went to uh, on a shark day. So we went to go see sharks in the ocean. Okay. So we spent the whole day it was uh, in uh, Gansby, and um, so went there, and we got on the boat, and we did see sharks, and we're in a cage. We go down eight at a time, go down the cage, and we have a wetsuit on and goggles and such, and when the shark's supposed to come up, you're supposed to dive and look in, into the water, but it was so uh, dense you couldn't see. So we just okay. saw them as they came up to the, to the cage there, and they threw out like dead fish, and they had a decoy, which they call a seal, and they dragged that, and all of a sudden the shark would just flash out of the water and just grab that, son of a, try to grab it, and it's pretty awesome to see that. Interesting part about that is that 60% of the people on the boat got sick because it was very wavy and oh. so it was a lot of barf bags and that hanging around there. So <laughs> fortunately, I didn't have to do it, but it was took me about four or five hours after we landed back on well, land. How, how, how long were you actually out at sea? About four and a half hours. Okay. Yeah, so there That's was like enough. 30 people and then there were eight, of, no, I think it was 40 people, so there was five groups that had to go down into the cage. And how, how rough, how, how high were the waves? Uh, probably three to four feet. Oh. It's yeah. nothing. It, well, it wasn't bad, but it, the boat was doing one of these, and you know, people got real sick. There, yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, that evening, we had a chance. To, uh, seven of us went to a, a family, and we had a, a, a dinner with them. And they cooked it for us and everything. It was only for with his family. It was real nice, the husband and wife. Did he speak English? Oh, yeah. He spoke very good English. He was a minister. He was an undertaker. He did all kinds of things. And, <laughs> and she served a beautiful dinner there with unbelievable chicken and soup. It was just unreal. And we had a good time to kind of have conversation with him and right. what he did. And he had a 20 year old uh, boy there that he was helping out. And he came about, when we're about halfway through our meal, he sang to us. And really? he had the most beautiful voice you can ever imagine. No kidding. Unbelievable. And he's a real good kid, you know. And he helps a lot of these kids like that, you know, try to get mm -hmm. them back into society. So after that, this is our trip in Cape Town. Then we went to Durban where we uh, saw, had a sunset cruise. And then we went on a uh, game drive, which, and um, and they called it the game drive was in High Ula Way, 
Infolozi. And it was, was, a that, was, that all, was that all the way down near the end of the Cape, or is that No, that was more, we, we flew up to Durban, which is more to the east side. And oh, moves you actually up a little flew bit. up there? Yeah, we had to fly up there, okay. yep. We flew up to, to Durban, and then we went to, the, like I say, the Sunshed Cruise, and then the Game Drive. And um, uh, after we did that, we saw some animals there, and it's in the northern part of, uh, say, the northeast corner of um, South Africa. It's called <coughs> KwaZulu-Natal, which is kind of the northern part of, right. of um, Cape Town, or, uh, yeah, uh, South, South Africa. And there we saw some warthogs and some elephants and those kind of things, but uh, kind of minor. Yeah. Then we had to tra uh, travel into Swaziland, and this was the most interesting to get our st uh, passport stamped. And as you got your passport stamped, they had these little boxes where they gave you condoms if you wanted. Really? Yes, and the reason for <laughs> that is that HIV or the AIDS problem in Africa is like 30% of the people. Really? And everywhere you go, in banks and that, you can pick up these condoms. They're trying to really uh, curtail that situation with the AIDS and such. Wow. And very interesting, yeah, it was just, um, it's amazing. It's just things they do. So 30% of the people, you think, have, AIDS. has HIV? Yeah, yes, it does. Wow. And both in Botswana and Zimbabwe, too. So everywhere you go into banks and bathrooms and that they have these available so they're right. trying to you know curtail as much as possible so that was the interesting part of Swaziland and then during going through Swaziland we um, went to a, um, a candle factory we got some real nice candles like this they kind of effers, uh, effervescent when they light them they actually kind of show real well in here right. and then uh, these were some of the other candles and soaps they had there it was pretty neat that these are some of the um, animals they had in candles were all striped zebras and giraffes. They're beautiful candles. You wouldn't imagine. I mean, just incredibly nice. And also, we went to a glass factory, and in the glass factory, they actually took recycled glass that people picked up from the rose and that, right. and they sell them to the, the glass factory. And they made these things like, here's the penguin they had here, and then here's the five basic, I know I can pick them up. There's the five, the big five they're called in Africa. But those are all recycled glass. They're all recycled glass, well, yeah. They're, they're really on the clear, table, they're real clear. And this is yeah. really a kind of a wooden part of it, which starts basically with the big five. You have the, um, the elephant, this is the rhinoceros, the cape buffalo, the lion, and the leopard. That's what they consider the big five okay. in Africa. So you see all five, then you've, you've had a good trip. Unfortunately, we didn't see the leopards. Uh, we saw everything but the leopards. And, um, but still an interesting part to go to these uh, places there. And this was the basic uh, part in, in um, Swaziland. We stayed in a hotel. They call it Pro All hotels are Protea, but there might be the Hot Victoria Junction, which was in Cape Town, and this right. one here in uh, Swaziland was called the Hayview. And there was a good general manager by the name of Glennis DuPont, and she wanted me to em emphasize Hazy. Um, View was a very nice place to visit. It was. We had a beautiful lodge there. We stayed and overlooked the uh, mountains and such. And there was uh, monkeys in there. And there was they call a weaver bird. Right. This weaver bird, he would the male would build a nest, and if the female came and uh, visited the nest, she didn't like it, she would destroy it, and he'd have to remake it again. Oh, really? He'd have to make it three <laughs> or four times. So she got ticked off. So, I don't like this. I'm out of okay. here. Okay. So, so it's kind of interesting. So that was kind of neat. And then yep. we had a chance to visit a orphanage and. There's about 80 kids there. Right. We brought a lot of school supplies that I brought from the States here. And then we stopped at a store and we must have bought like 40 pounds of rice and maize and potatoes and oranges to take to the orphanage. Right. And it really was really um, so welcome when to give them this food. It was unbelievable. And they sang for us, you know, all these right. songs. I mean, so real good kids. And I brought like 150 Tootsie Rolls to pass out. They loved the candy <laughs> and the oranges. So that's what they had. We're going to have to take a little break here, Jim. Okay. We'll be back in about uh, two or three minutes Sounds and good. continue this very interesting uh, story about Jim's trip to uh, Africa. The United States Air Force has a proud history of leading our nation in embracing diversity. We've been reaching new heights for years by understanding it's our individual experiences which make us strong. You can share in this success by seeking opportunities to learn and grow as a member of a diverse team. We are the world's greatest Air Force, not because of what we do, but who we are. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. Welcome back to Active Living. We have Jim Robeck with us again today. And we're going to continue with his uh, story about his wonderful trip to South Africa. Okay, just uh, regarding Swaziland, it was interesting. This country is a strictly a monarchy. And really? the king rules, and he has absolute power. And the first king, he died, I think it was 19, or 1983. He had 72 wives. 
and nurtured over 200 children. He had 1,000 grandchildren. Whoa. And he had two first wives. They were like dual leadership. They uh, Two wives were the key ones. Then when he died, his uh, one of the sons took over for one of the two wives there. Um, and he has, um, what, 14 wives now and 23 children. And uh, one thing interesting there that a young girl who's between 14 and 18 have a ritual that they perform every year, then the king has an idea he can select some of these maidens there to right. bring to his place there. So kind of interesting countries and monarchy. So very interesting. So but what do you have to do to be king? I guess it's inherited. I mean, he was a king since way back when, so I know it goes back quite a few years there. So he Sounds had, like a great job to me. That's a hell of a job, I'll tell you. And he's absolute monarchy. Everything is run by the king. So from there, we went to, uh, <coughs> continued on through um, South Africa, went to uh, Kruger National Park. We saw, again, another preserve uh, where all the uh, animals are in an open vehicle. We drove around. Right. Again, we saw the main area that we saw, the main things we saw there was the rhinos. There are two right. rhinos, the black and the white. The white are considered grazers. They feed in the grass. The okay. black do not. They feed on other things, but not the grass. So there's two different rhinos. But we saw the rhinos, but no, uh, no black ones. How then, close did you get to these rhinos? Oh, they can they're, be dangerous, oh, they're right? probably no more than 15, 20 feet in really? these vehicles. Yeah, they're very close. And they just munch along there. They don't seem to bother. They don't care. Okay. So it was pretty close. And it was real close, in fact. Real close. But there's been stories about rhinos turning over Jeeps and stuff like uh, that. That probably could happen, even elephants and such. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure it happens. That, but these ranges are pretty good. They pretty okay. well know the distance where to go, what they can do. Uh, then as we started leaving Kruger National Park, we uh, went through what they call Paradise Country. And it was almost like uh, an area like the Grand Canyon. There's what they call Blyde River Canyon out of Red, Stans Red, Red Sandstone. And then they called, uh, there's Bork Lux Potholes. It was a formation of the rock and section of waterfalls. There was okay. absolutely gorgeous. And finally, in this miniature Grand Canyon, or I called it the, it's the third largest of on the world after the Grand Canyon. I'm not sure what the other one, this is the third one. And they have the three Ronde Rondevilles, which are three sisters, the three spirals that come out of the right. uh, mountain there. And just absolutely gorgeous once again. And um, once we got to Johannesburg, uh, we visited uh, Sweto, which is, again, one of those poor sections of Africa. Okay. And we saw Desmond Tutu's house and Mandela House, where he lived a number of years there, where he actually lived for about 10 years after he got to prison. Um, unfortunately, in the ghettos there, or I said the ghettos, I guess, I guess you can call them ghettos, that in some of the places that they have a room that's 10 by 10, only three, three families live in a 10 by 10 room. Three families. Three families, and there's no bathrooms. You know, you got like maybe a five-gallon bucket or something like that. That's about it. A little bit of running water in some of them. There's one woman who's been waiting over 25 years to get an upgrade to her apartment. Really? Not happening. And uh, we saw where people were cooking sheep heads on fire and then selling it. And it was. And actually, they had these uh, carriers they have in the ships. They're actually homes for them on this particular sweat though. Really? Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's it's. Poverty is really right. Poverty is real bad. We saw the apartheid museum there where the first, one of the first black persons that were killed in all these riots was the Hector Peterson. So we went through that museum. They went to the Museum of History where they had the whole history of the blacks and what they've endured. Right. Uh, when they went through a lot of killings there by the white of the black people when they rioted and tried to get better conditions. And it was an interesting, very interesting. In fact, when you went to the museum, you had a line for white only and black only just to con show that. Right. differences that was occurring there so right. it, it was sad and it was very very so is it still do they still have a uh, separation of the blacks and whites no they don't but it's okay. but this whole community you know where they live now it's just trying to get out of that poverty level okay. it's really tough it's really tough but the one thing they're doing now since mandela took over that children must go to school from the age of 16 to 14 or 6 to 14. 6 to 14. they must go they don't get employment at 14 they must continue on school okay. if you're in college you're okay they will actually go to university after That's that great. yeah then after Johannesburg, which was a nice city, there was a bad section of Johannesburg. I don't want to comment on that because this was a drug-infested area, but it's, it was very sad. So after Johannesburg, we flew to Victoria Falls, where we visited Victoria Falls, which is one of the seventh national wonders of the world. It's supposed to be spectacular. It was spectacular to the extent. It wasn't as spectacular as it should be because through March and May is when they had the rainy season. Okay. That's when it's most spectacular because right now only 40% of it was water coming over the... Uh, the falls. Okay. So it was still spectacular because it's twice as high as Niagara Falls and about a mile and a half wide. Wow. So and it's twice as high, which is about uh, 320 feet high as far as some of the cascading water coming over there. Um, one of the things they had 16 points that you walked around to see all the different points as you went along the falls there, and to the mm -hmm. last point where there was a statue of uh, Livingston, you know, who was one of the 
explorers who founded Victoria Falls when he okay. met Stanley there in your history books, you remember? <laughs> so it's kind of neat. No, I don't remember. Don't remember, that that's too, too far back. Ago. That was too far back. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess coming from Canada, we had to read about that stuff. Okay. There. We stayed at a great place called the Safari Lodge. We overlooked our window out of our, not our window, but our veranda, looked out over an oasis where the animals came in the morning and oh, evening. Really? Oh, it was unbelievable. That was, the Safari set up on top of the hill, this lodge. And you see all kinds of animals come there. And when we first got in the room, there was a darn monkey next door. So I thought we could feed this guy, you know. So I went and got a banana. And I came out and just did this. And he came over there real fast, grabbed that out of my hand. I said, I almost got attacked there. I said, wow. <laughs> so he just got it and he peeled the banana and just sat there and munched, munched away at the banana. Yeah. So it was kind of neat, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but unfortunately, I can say the beauty was not as spectacular as it would normally be. But then we took a helicopter ride over the falls, which okay. was, uh, was very spectacular. It was like 13 minutes for 150 bucks, but it was well worth it. It almost like felt like an eagle up there. You just kind of rotating up there. Yeah. It was really just phenomenal to well, see that. I did that. the same thing in Hawaii. Went over the, oh, the what they call the Grand Canyon of the West. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it was ah, great. Ah, fantastic. It's, it's the highlight of the trip. Oh, without a doubt it has to be. I mean, this was really a, one of the highlights. It was fantastic. And um, then we had dinner at the, there's a lodge there. They have a, a dinner place there. It was kind of a dinner show. Mm -hmm. And it was like $40 a person, and we ate all the wild game. For example, we had warthog steak, warthog steak. Uh -huh. we had elan meatballs, we had oxtail, we had kudu stew, and other game meat. I have no idea, but I ate some of that, which was really good. And they entertained us through all their ethnic dances and some of the drums they played. So they showed us how to play the drums. And, really? Oh, it was really nice. And all in their costumes and that. And, now, how uh, big was your group? Well, we, uh, I think our group, well, we only had seven of us left. We started out with 38 in our group. We ended up with, uh, I think it was six at the end. We went to Victoria Falls. The other ones broke off as okay. we left Cape Town or Johannesburg, and then some broke off before they went to Victoria Falls. Okay. So we got down to six. Okay. And um, in fact, it was eight. There's two left Victoria Falls. They didn't go to Botswana. That's what it was. So um, after dinner, you know, it was just a beautiful thing to uh, have all that meat and everything else. It was kind of neat. And um, so that was kind of a, a good experience as far as wild animals was concerned. And, and the meat and the food was excellent. I went, it tasted great, huh? I went back for <laughs> seconds on Warthog. It was got an Elan meat balls. They were good. They were good. They were good. So that was kind of the, uh, the Victoria Falls and the dinner and what was there. Um, so it was uh, a a neat place to visit. We didn't go to the other side, which was the Zambia side. They said during the dry season, it's better to see it from the Zambia side. Okay. But then you got to pay to get across and all that because another border right there. Okay. So, but so uh, they have pretty good uh, border control. Oh yeah, every border you go through, they st you got every one we went through from Swaziland back into uh, South Africa, Swaziland into when we flew into. Uh, Zimbabwe goes through passport control, then finally went to Botswana. Well, passport, passport is okay. You don't need a visa or anything. Well, like we had that. to get a visa in Zimbabwe. It was $45. Oh, yeah, you okay. actually had to get a double entry because you leave once and you come back. So we had to do a double entry. for $45. We had to wait in line for about 20 minutes or so. It went pretty good. So after we visited Victoria Falls, which was spectacular, I mean, then we visited, then we went to Botswana. Ended up going to uh, the Chobe Marina Lodge, and um, there we had an opportunity to go through, a, we did three safaris, and this was most spectacular. We okay. finally, I think it was on the, s the second safari, we saw lions in the morning. There was nine of them. Whoa, oh, really? Oh, that was a highlight, I mean. And then we saw uh, the male there. He was kind of sitting back about 100 yards. The, they were actually going through the brush. So it wasn't as close as the second uh, sighting okay. that we saw, but it was spectacular. Everybody just oohed and awed and saw that stuff. It was fantastic. Then we went later in the afternoon, we, then we saw them again. They're all side by the roadside, you know, and then the, um, they're just laying there, just relaxing again from maybe 10 or 15 feet. They're just looking at you and yeah. yawning and say, okay, you're here. And the one had a collar that they are tracking. Okay. So they were tracking one of the lions there, but that was the highlight to see the lions. And we went on two more and tried to find the leopards. No luck. No luck and we the looked, leopards. We went everywhere. I think it was the morning we left at five o'clock in the morning and got there at six. Oh, the day before we went at six o'clock, we saw some wild dogs, which I thought people were pulling my legs, but there's wild dogs there. Yeah. And they were the most funniest little things. There was a female way back and all these little cubs were running all the way around, you know, and there was, it was a little bit dark. I didn't get some good pictures, but uh, hopefully that one of the couples got, got some pictures we'll be able to see later on. Okay. Uh, we did a sunset cruise, uh, and these, again, you saw elephants and 
crocodiles, the Nile crocodiles, they're not alligators, they're Nile crocodiles. We saw one of the banks like 10 feet long and it was just unbelievable and uh, just laying there. So what? Uh, taking life easy. Taking life easy. And we saw a couple of uh, some birds like storks and things like that. And one of the birds was interesting, it was called the Jesus bird. And he kind of walks on the reeds, he kind of like walks on water, so they call him a Jesus bird. <laughs> <laughs> he was a cute little devil. And they had another bird, he would kind of run and he'd spread his wings out and he'd spread over the water to try to get the prey down there. And right. if he didn't like it, he'd close his wings and jump someplace else, open up his wings again, camouflage it, and away he goes. It was the funniest thing you ever saw. I mean, just like, what is, what is this bird doing? So it was kind of neat. Cool. And then we walked down into uh, town and we, we did a two hour fishing charter. Oh, did we you tried really? to try to find some tiger fish. And uh, one of the fellows that was, there was four of us went, and Chad, he hooked into it, but he just pulled their weight off and he got another bite. And he actually, lost, we lost the lure. So, but there was tiger fish. They actually were only about, about this big. They had is caught one right? the day before, this guy. And <clears throat> the guy was running, he said, oh, You all four can go for like 90 bucks. Was, for two hours, what a deal, you know? Yeah. So it was a, it was a good thing there. So. So that was <clears throat> that was pretty uh, pretty neat to do the uh, fishing for two so hours. So did you guys catch any fish? No, we didn't. We had, we hooked up two of them, but didn't land them because oh, they're pretty okay. ferocious. I mean, they got teeth like something out prehistoric, you know, really, really nasty looking devils. And it was a catch and release if you caught when you had to release right. it, but didn't catch them. But it was just fun being out in the water there. <clears throat> so then, from once we left, after we did a couple, uh, like say, I think it was at least three safaris at Chobe, and a real great place. The food was. Excellent, all these particular places, you know, these four and five star hotels. I mean, these lodges were just absolutely impeccable. Um, <clears throat> then we returned after, uh, after we did the, the last safari, we went back to Victoria Falls. And we might just comment a couple more things here, like these bowls here that we purchased here. Yeah, these, they look, were, these look really They're really nice. They're, they're like really three cool. and four dollars each, and they were really nice to, uh, to purchase. Like the elephant, it was like about, this uh, one here was about four dollars, you know. In fact, we, he gave us that because we had bought so much stuff there. My friend, Samantha, she bought about yeah. seven or eight dollars. Seven or eight like dollars this. worth. Is yeah, this, that was is really. Is it painted? No, this it's is, all carved. Is that right? Yeah, it's carved into the wood. I think this is a, um, that's teak, I think. The other, these are both teak here. That's and this is mahogany, the elephant right here. Yeah, these are really cool. Yeah, they were. And like I say, she bought about seventy dollars. She bought a walking cane. It was so intricately carved. Yeah. We brought that back. It was okay. really neat. Uh, and it was like twenty-five dollars. I mean, all the work workmanship went into yeah. it. Unbelievable. And he gave us the elephant. And then she gave it to me as a, as a gift here. That's great. I bought these in uh, Swaziland. Here's the king and queen. Uh, and these were like ten dollars here. I mean, they're really inexpensive. You know, yeah. I mean, you can get some really good artifacts that uh, are nice to bring back. Um, mm -hmm. Then you had. These are hard to stand up. And this little devil here, this was in the candle factory. I thought it was kind of neat because they made it out of, this is a cow's horn. And they painted it and okay. everything else and uh, did a really nice job. You set your candle in here and, okay. uh, and they so do a heck of a job. a candle holder, That's actually. a candle holder, yeah. Okay. It's kind of re really interesting. I thought, that, yeah, yeah, that's but I thought this was a metal, but it was actually a cow's horn. So that was pretty good there. So, but a lot of neat stuff you can buy. I mean, just you can only pack so much in your suitcase. I was yeah. over by, I was at 52 pounds. I had to take two pounds out of my suitcase. Uh, okay. Because BOAC, which is British Airways, I mean, they're right. stickler on 50 pounds. Yeah. So I take it out. It doesn't matter. I put another bag and I'm taking the plane anyways, but I don't. I don't understand it. Don't either. understand it either. <laughs> so, but it is what it is. So. Jim, uh, we got to wrap it up here pretty okay. quick. We're getting close to the end. But, uh, can you give us kind of a, a, a general feeling as to how you like this trip? Oh, this is wonderful. I mean, if, if you ever have a chance to go, it's worth it. I mean, uh, you have so much to see from the safaris, the museums, and the scenery. Just so spectacular. And I never believed it would be that much there, but it was really just some Victoria Falls, you know, and the uh, safaris. I mean, everything we did was just outstanding. And the, the, the tour pe people we used, Gate One, is uh, absolutely fantastic. I mean, yeah, our great. hotels are four and five star hotels. That's a fantastic. fabulous. It's just a fantastic place to visit. Yeah, great. I'd recommend it to anybody if they have a chance. All right, well, we got to wrap it up. Jim, thanks again. Hopefully, uh, we'll see you again short, shortly. Are you in, planning any other of these yep, fantastic we're adventures? We're heading for Morocco in December, and then in March, we're going to Nepal and Bhutan. Oh, my God. Yes. You guys are. We're crazy. Tra <laughs> you're traveling, traveling people, that's for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Guys, see the world while you're young. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Hopefully, we'll see you shortly when Jim comes back from his next tour. <laughs>